we're go. Hi, everybody. We're back. It's Tuesday. It's 9.30-ish, and we're ready to get going here for our quick breakfast. Uh, uh, today, I'm having mahi-mahi. Uh, reason for that is one of my favorite fish, and whenever I see it, I buy it. Uh, it's not always available retail, uh, mainly because the restaurant industry tries to snap it all up whenever they can, and it's not uh, generally not farm-raised. I've never seen farm-raised mahi. I have caught mahi, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, you can see where I got it, Whole Foods, and I bought enough for Jody and myself today, as well as a chunk for tomorrow. So when I saw this piece sitting in the store, I said, give me that piece. And he said, don't you want me to weigh it? And I said, no, I'll just take the whole thing and I'll figure it out later. So it's a beautiful fish, it's a very popular fish. Um, most people love it. It's rich without being too rich. Um, Nice and flavorful. So first thing I'm going to do is cut myself tomorrow's portion, which is a nice thin, and that's going to cook quick uh, tomorrow. We're going to leave the skin on just because I think for most people it's hard to skin the fish. So I'm going to give it a quick rinse. You'll also notice I have a dedicated cutting board just for the fish. And my pan's heating up. I want to get that nice and dry. I want to get all that excess moisture off. I always rinse my fish. Some people don't. I am a rinser prior to cooking and just prior to cooking. Uh, leaving the skin on will give it a little, make it take a little bit longer to cook as that heat needs to penetrate the skin, but we're going to live with that today. Uh, so, a little salt and pepper while the pan's heating up. I love my pepper, big pepper shaker. I know a lot of people like brown pepper or grinding it themselves, and that's fine, but um, my commercial size pepper shaker makes me happy. So I'm going to lay that off. While the pan's heating up real quickly, we're going to shred some Brussels sprouts to have in there. I've got a nice big batch of spinach uh, that we're going to throw in for our wilted greens, and a little opal basil from my garden. Um, it's just about time to harvest all the herbs. Things are getting off. Uh, the usual peppers and onions. I've got a few mushrooms today that I want to use up. And the brown rice was cooked this morning and I'll have that for breakfast the next couple of days as well. So here we go. I'm gonna use grapeseed oil for this fish so I can use a little bit higher temperature. And as usual, because we're cooking breakfast fast, we're gonna do it all in one pan. So I just wanna make sure that gets nice and hot. So with this, I want to just see that shimmer. I know I'm a little generous with the oil, but I'm going to cook my vegetables in the same pan. So in goes the fish. Lay it in, don't drop it in. And now we'll, I'm going to keep that pan pretty much on high heat. That's not a really thick piece of mahi. It's going to cook pretty quick. So in the meantime, I want to start getting going on my veggies. So the whole idea with the Brussels sprouts is to shred them. Again, um, you can use shredded sprouts for lots of different dishes. Uh, great to throw into a pasta dish or something. They're a strong flavor. They're not necessarily everybody's favorite flavor, um, but they certainly are a nice dark leafy green and a lot of good health benefits. They have become very popular in the last few years. Uh, they weren't terribly popular when I first got into the business. You didn't see them commonly, but of course now everybody figured out that yes, you can Blanch them off and deep fry them. <laughs> and of course, we all know how good deep fried food is, so I do like them uh, in all their various ways. Roasted, sauteed, um, and of course, a little fryer going on too. So we're cooking enough for two, and it's going to be my main vegetable today. The lemon will help cut that flavor, and of course, uh, the two things that really help Brussels sprouts, uh, we're only going to use one of. Those two things are bacon and onions. Uh, we, of course, have onions going today, but we're not going to cook to any extra bacon. So I just want to get the rest of my vegetables going real quick, too. So a little chunk of onion, save the rest for tomorrow and the next day, or whatever dish is coming up. This is a sweet onion, sometimes known as Vidalia. Um, you can pretty much tell by their shape. They tend to be a little bit sweeter. They're generally speaking a little more like somebody pressed them from top to bottom. The Brussels sprouts will be the longest cooking vegetable today. 
So we're going to get those in the pan in a moment and then fire off the peppers and onions after that. And the mushrooms will go in near the end. Uh, mushrooms, generally speaking, give off a lot of moisture, which I don't want a lot of moisture in the pan when I'm sauteing in oil. So, kind of take a handful of these. I always give them a quick rinse. Um, they grow in fertilizer. I don't want to drench them. I know a lot of people say you should brush the mushrooms and all that kind of stuff, but the fact that they grow in fertilizer just makes me want to make sure they're lightly rinsed. They're mostly water anyway, and of course, because of our breakfast format, we're going to slice them nice and thin. Yeah, I do this pretty much every day, but usually half the amount today, of course, I'm very happy to have Jody here with me. Mm -hmm. um, take a quick look at the fish. You can see the color starting to come up on the sides a little bit. What I really want to do right now is just make sure it's not sticking. So I'm just going to take a very thin spatula and make sure it's nice and loose in there. Um, because the best part, of course, is the part that is in contact with the pan, that's the part that's getting the brown, good flavor. So let's get these Brussels sprouts in. We're not going to create a little chaos in there. People don't realize how quick a fantastic breakfast really does come together. Yeah, it's just, it's good sauté for this breakfast. It is. Good night, skills. A little turmeric, of course. And good basic stovetop skills, the sauté. Uh, and again, batching your grains. So this will be ready for tomorrow. I set this off. Uh, this rice cooker takes an hour to cook brown rice. So when I got up this morning at 7, uh, I made my rice. Um, and it's still hot and ready to go. So that's, that's going to come out. Now we are cooking for two. So I'm going to get my other pan started a little bit quick here. Um, and while that's heating up, I just want to get some basil leaves going. And you'll always see me use more fresh herbs than any recipe calls for. Uh, the measurement of fresh herbs is almost, I, I want to call it a moot point. I just, it, measuring fresh herbs is kind of pointless um, because there's no good way to measure them and they don't need to be really measured. So just rinse and stem and chop. I'm going to use my chiffonade technique here, get them nice and thin. Just go through them once. And they don't have to be super small either. When it says a tablespoon of fresh herbs, that's after they've been stemmed and minced. So that, you know, depending on how you pack it, that could be anywhere from a tablespoon to a quarter cup. So there's a lot of variance in there. The right amount is just make your food taste good and anything approximately close to what you're looking for is gonna work. So. Well, and it adds freshness without any kind of process. Without too. any effort, it adds that beautiful freshness. There's my fish. Oh, I had a little beautiful. bit of stick there. Okay, the piece that didn't get all the brown will be my piece. Jody will get the other side. <laughs> and now those Brussels sprouts are starting to soften up a little bit. Um, with the skin on, it's going to take a little longer, but the skin will come right off when it's fully cooked. So that's probably about four minutes away. Uh, and because the pan's a little crowded, we're just going to use my omelet pan, my egg pan, to start the rest of my saute, which is, of course, going to start with the peppers and onions. Compared to olive oil, how high does the heat go on grapeseed oil? Um, I don't know. I never can remember definitively. Um, but generally speaking, um, well over 400 degrees, probably somewhere between 425 and 450. With these oils, I never want to see smoke. I want to see a shimmer in the pan. Let me know it's nice and hot. If it's starting to, even starting to smoke, the pan's probably a little too hot. Hmm. With olive oil, I literally wait for the first sign of, shim of smoke, the first little faint ghostly whisk. Um, you can see a little bit of smoke coming off that, but that's actually not smoke, that's steam. Smoke comes from oil, steam comes from water. And of course, water and oil are two basic stovetop 
cooking environments. You're either sauteing in oil or you're bleaching in water. Um, and of course, vegetables give up water while they're cooking. That's normal because they have water in them. So, it's always a bit of a delicate thing. My plate's out. Those are starting to soften. And we're going to just check the mahi. It's still very, very soft. So we're going to give that about three more minutes. And now you can see my onions and peppers are starting to get a little wilted, a little pale. So now I'm going to add the mushrooms and the basil. We're going to hit all this with a little lemon. Um, just because, quite frankly, seafood and fish love citrus. Match made in heaven. Um, so we're just going to finish this dish today with a little squeeze of lemon, and that's it. All right, Brussels sprouts are getting nice and brown, so they're going to come out into these guys, so they don't continue to cook. But I love that little bit of caramelization on those sprouts, that golden crispiness. Definitely gives the Brussels sprouts a nicer flavor. And here, I'm just waiting. It's starting to get a little firmer. Don't try this at home, everybody. There we go. All right. Um, when this today, when the mahi comes out, the spinach goes in on this pan. So we're just about there. You can peek a little bit if you want. I'm going to turn this so you can see. I just peek inside a little bit. You can see we're just about there. So uh, maybe one more minute there, which is pretty good timing. Because my vegetables need about another minute. What's going to happen is those mushrooms are going to start releasing water. So you're going to start seeing steam come off these vegetables. Okay. But there's my rainbow for the day. I've got the red bell pepper, got the green vegetable with that thing, my ever-present onions, and a few mushrooms. We are doing a mushroom class tonight. So in the fridge, I've also got some shiitakes, I've got some oyster mushrooms, and I even have a little bit of a forest medley. And then the next trip is to the Asian markets for some trumpet mushrooms, some minokis, or whatever else they have on hand. The nice thing about mushrooms, you can use pretty much any mushroom you like, any place you like. Uh, the wild mushrooms are going to cook the same as button mushrooms. Uh, they're just going to be raw orange sour flavor. So they can be roasted, sauteed. They even have a recipe for grilling them, uh, as long as they don't fall through the grates. Okay, so you guys are done. He's, start, he's firm enough. So what we're going to do here, we're going to turn this way down. I'm going to move that guy over to let that piece of fish finish off with the pan on ultra low. And while that pan still has plenty of heat, I'm going to add this back. And as the pan starts to wilt quickly, we are getting ready to cook eggs. Get in there, you. There we go. There's so much heat in the pan that I don't need, really need to have it on high heat to cook the spinach. It's just going to wilt uh, from the heat that's still in that cast iron skillet, as you can see. And that pan is on real low heat. And there's my wilt. I can stop right there. And here we go. Now, I want to keep this hot while I finish everything out. And as we always do at this stage of the game, is ask Jody how she wants her eggs. Over easy. Over easy. Oh. A woman that knows what she wants. Yep. Mark that date on the calendar. <laughs> I know I'm always a little generous with the butter, uh, but in this case it's going to play even better role because. That little bit of extra butter is really going to complement my fish. So, eggs in. And while those are coming up, we're going to hit this guy's with lemon juice. Mm. 
Rainbow. That's a little bit of steam on all that. The fish as well. So, construction time. Rice. Remember the right amount of rice is how much you're going to eat. If you're six foot two, 240 pounds, you're probably going to eat a little bit more than somebody else. What I want to do here now is finish Jody's plate. So I'm taking out a nice scoop of those beautiful rainbow veggies. Five veggies and a general rule. This comes out. What I'm going to do here is bring it over here and just take off the skin. This comes right off. It's hot, yeah, so we're quick. You want to get all that fish and out it goes. I'm going to take out the bloodline and turn it over so it looks all pretty on Jody's plate. happening might as well get my plate going too. Because we're counting down the seconds to completed eggs. And as you guys you've watched my video before you know I just like putting the eggs right on the veggies. Fantastic. There's our breakfast this morning. Our time is about 15 minutes just a tad over maybe. But uh, again the whole bowl is 30 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes of cooking, 15 to 10 to 15 minutes of eating, get you out the door, sustained energy for the vast majority of the day. I won't be hungry again until probably 4 o'clock, so this is power breakfast to keep you going. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks a lot.